hunting out of a tree saddle what the heck is that does it work is it effective is it safe and how do i get started stay tuned as we cover all of the above and we also give one of you viewers a chance to win an entire setup so you can get out and hunt out of a tree saddle this fall what's up guys welcome to a new video today we're going over tree saddle hunting specifically out west or like i have in the past hunting elk out of a tree saddle a couple of things we're going to cover is some things i've learned um, tree saddle hunting myself i'm also going to give you some tips on where to set one up if you find like a water hole or something you want to sit over and then we've got rob from tethered out here he's in town so we're going to buzz up the canyon and show you guys exactly how to set one up in the field we're also going to give away a complete tethered setup to one of you who are watching so make sure you stay to the end to figure out how you get a chance to win all right let's jump right into the good stuff we're going to start out by showing you one of my setups out in colorado this is just an over-the-counter archery elk hunt anybody can get this tag anybody can do this hunt and water was actually pretty scarce that year so i decided to add the saddle to my tool belt and again, this is just one way to hunt. This is not your end all fix all. For those of you who love to spot and stalk and call, when that's effective, I'm all about it too. So the tree saddle, we're just adding to your tool belt and adding a new way that you can create opportunity to increase your odds of punching your tag. So here's a perfect example of finding a water hole. It had a bunch of elk tracks around it and it just looked like a solid spot it wasn't too far from camp so i decided this would be a great place to set up we were already back country we we're already packed in by horses and if i can just increase my odds by sitting on this water hole midday why the heck not let's give it a try so you can see from the view right here to my right i had a wall of timber the the dark timber was kind of running down um, a slope and the tracks over there were just pounded out and then to my left, I kind of had some sparse aspens. So I set up in the best tree I could on this side of the pond. Typically, the wind was hitting my back and kind of blowing across the pond, which I thought would be good for elk that were coming from the dark timber side. My first sit in this stand, a group of cow elk came down. And I'll tell you what, you can see right here from the GoPro footage, just how close they are, how calm they are. Had there been a bull with these cows, it would have totally been a game over. But unfortunately, uh, they came down, they got a drink, and they carried on, and I never saw a mature bull or a herd bull. But that didn't stop me from sitting. I committed to this spot for the remainder of the hunt, especially through middays when calling was, was not really going on. There's a lot of pressure here, so I was trying to just increase my odds so i was sitting midday and there wasn't much going on but it's at noon to one time frame and suddenly i look to my left again i'm a left-handed shooter i look to my left and here comes a nice shooter bull in my opinion i would love to fill my tag with this bull and he's coming in but he's coming straight at me so tip for those who are new to saddle hunting i had the tethered attached to uh, my harness I know I'm not using the right words here, but I had the tethered and I also had the lineman's belt for two points of contact. It was comfortable and it provided extra safety for me, but that kind of stung me because as this elk comes in, to my right, being a left-handed shooter, I just couldn't get away from the tree enough to really anchor and settle in on this bull. And you can see my backpack right there. That was another lesson learned for me. I need to get that backpack somewhere else out of my way so it's not an issue like it was here. Unfortunately for me, the wind shifted, it hit my back, that elk's nose came up and you can see his body language. He knows something's wrong, but he doesn't know where it came from. And I was at full draw when he whirled around and just decided not to take the shot because I wasn't comfortable with my anchor. I couldn't see my sight window through my peep correctly and that bull just tore out of there and I never did get a chance at him and I honestly never even filled that tag all right if you saw the first clip in this video you're probably curious like what happened how did you get set up and how did that go down so let me explain the entire thing real quick the day before I set up the tree saddle I had located this wallow it had sign tracks uh, uh, recent rubs from bulls I knew it was a at least getting hit I didn't know how many elk were in here because I didn't preseason scout it a ton but it, it clearly it was being hit by bulls and this was going to be where I was going to set up my tree saddle. And the year I did this hunt, I really had the goal to 
not only shoot a bull from the saddle, but capture it on film. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. I set up as a lefty shooter to shoot at a water hole. And for those of you who have sat in the saddle, you kind of understand that's your strong side. I'll just let it roll right here. I mentioned that the wind is kind of coming downhill. So if anything's gonna come, it's coming from that direction. Back in the tree saddle, got the wind, the thermals moving down. So hopefully some elk come from this area or else if they come from downwind, they probably win me. Well, lucky for me, that bull came from downwind. He's coming right at me. But at this moment, he had to make a decision if he was either going to take a left to get to the water, like a shortcut, or if he was going to take the right, which would just be coming down this old road. And that's what he did. So it felt like eternity in the moment. But as you can see, it wasn't that long. He kind of sat there. He could hear some elk in the distance. And uh, that was just capturing his attention. But once he turned his head and started walking with that front shoulder, I knew he was committed to come into my only opening on that side of the tree. So I was able to draw back with a little bit of cover, but these elk, they just, they're not used to looking up. They're not like whitetails where they come into a place, they catch a scent and they're starting to look up in the trees. These elk just are not used to that. So lucky for me, I got away with pulling back and arrowing this bull at six yards. Well, that's what the rangefinder captured from my angle to the ground. Obviously the elk's body is gonna take away a yard or two of that. So a five yard shot. And that's what tree saddle hunting, in my opinion, is all about, is just increasing your odds of getting a close ethical shot with a bow. And that's why I take the tree saddle out on all my archery elk hunts now. I know that if water is scarce, if I can find a beaten down path or if I can get in their bedding zone and cut them off to where they're traveling to and from bedding or using a wallow or a water source, not only am I going to get close, I'm going to have like a very good chance of getting a shot with a bow within 30 yards. And that's what you want to do with Archie. You want to get close. I love the tree saddle. It's been a ton of fun. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed just seeing some of those clips from the field while I was hunting elk in a tree saddle. So we're gonna go up the mountain now. Rob's gonna kind of show you guys the basic setups of the tethered tree saddle. And don't forget, we're gonna give one of these away to you, the entire system, everything you need to go out and hunt out of a tree saddle. So make sure you stay to the end so you can get entered for that and enjoy this. So uh, tree saddle hunting, it's been around since the 80s. Uh, kind of died out in the 90s, about five years ago, Greg Godfrey and Ernie Powers got together. They're the owners of Tethered and they came out with some pretty comfortable stuff that was really designed to be lightweight and get people deep in the woods. It's super big on, in the whitetail industry, but as far as Western hunting goes, it's kind of one of those untapped resources. I myself cut my chops hunting out West and the idea <laughs> of hunting out of a saddle going after elk was kind of a foreign concept to me. But like we say when we're hunting whitetail, like this isn't the end all be all method. It's just another tool in the tool belt. And seeing Eric's success a few years ago on that bull, I mean, it just made sense. So he hit us up recently and we flew out to kind of break down some of the new gear. And then for you new guys who might be interested at home, we're gonna really do like a quick little saddle hunting 101, show you some new gear and just kind of give you all the pointers that you need to get started hunting from saddle. Hopefully some of you guys are into it, if not, Good luck on the ground this season, guys. <laughs> this is our new saddle. It's called the Lockdown. Definitely gonna be geared towards a Western Hunter the more that I look at it. It's got this suspender system that we call a yoke system. It's an expanding saddle. It adds to the comfort, especially out here in Utah. I mean, the days are long in mid to late August. So to be able to have something that's gonna be able, to, that you're gonna be able to sit for, I don't know, how long would you say an all day sit is out here? And they're yeah early season they're sometimes. long yep. yeah yeah and exactly. i've done it from morning to dark yeah so you can do it morning to dark and be uncomfortable i know eric definitely struggled <laughs> with some of his comfort settings but the way that we progressed over the years we've just been able to dial this in to make it comfortable for any type of body style especially for the western hunter who's in the tree for 10 hours in a day i'll kind of throw this on So especially for going in deep, how far would you say you went in last year? I was like a mile in, just packing in, you know, yeah. with all my saddle stuff and my sticks. Yeah, so this yoke system was designed to kind of keep everything up, especially when you're carrying in a bunch of gear, like filling out these pockets. 
you're going to have weight in the saddle and it will have that tendency to sag. So by having this suspender system, keeps it up, keeps it really tight to your body and keeps it really comfortable. This is our freedom belt. It's a belt that adjusts. So as you're sitting in the tree and you start getting any kind of weird hot spots or pressure points, you're able to move this buckle freely. And it seems like such a small thing, but it's something that definitely helps on those all day sits. These are our leg straps. Pretty self-explanatory. They strap to your leg. So we're kind of buckled up here. Uh, I guess 101, the first thing guys, just like anything else, you're not just gonna get a new bow and go out into the mountains and hunt. You're gonna like dial it in, you're gonna practice, or at least you should be. Saddle hunting is no different. The biggest questions we get are like, is it safe, is it comfortable? The answer is yes to both of those things, but as long as you're practicing, as long as you're taking the time to really like figure out a, how to do it correctly, how to do it safely, and then B, how to adjust everything so that it is tuned to your body and it is comfortable. So that's the answer to that question. All right, so the first thing, just grab these here. Mm -hmm. What you're gonna do, this is your bridge. This is made from Amsteel. You could tow a truck with it and that's gonna be your lifeline when you're hooked into the tree. So for trusting your equipment, that is like, does not get safer. All right, so the ones I had before, they had no shoulder straps. That's new, huh? Yeah. We had suspenders, but these ones are like especially designed for the whitetail hunter in mind too, just as you're, it's getting later in the season mm -hmm. and you're putting on multiple layers. There's like a, an elastic band in the Whoa. back. There are a lot of flies These bugs are gnarly out here. That's another thing that we replaced from the model you had. We had G-hooks and now we have these actual clips that go together right here. Oh, okay. So that's my belt. Yep. I should have probably done that first. Then get my leg straps. It's been a minute since I climbed into one of these too. That's, it takes some uh, memory to, those feel somewhat comfortable and tight. Yeah, so the one thing that I typically do keep a little bit more snug, especially when I'm wearing this into the woods, is that, is the belt. Is that freedom belt. And then, it, yeah, that's pretty good. I don't like to get choked out in my nether region. So yeah. I usually keep those a little bit. That's looser. another learning curve. From oh, one, yeah. Once you get in a tree and start getting some pressure, you start to find out real quick what you might need to adjust. Yeah. Like so that that feels that? good right there. That feels good? Yep. Cool. And then for you guys at home, all this stuff hanging, you can clean that up. I cut the extra and just singe it, yeah, you know. I do but the of course thing. it comes with a lot. So if you notice that, it's just so it's universal and you can trim it if needed. Yep. And then, so some, one of the other big features on this is gonna be the expanding saddle body. So underneath these pockets, he's got handles on both sides here. And that's what you're gonna to use to expand that saddle okay. body. Yeah. Does it automatically suck up? Yeah. For okay, the, for the it, most you, part. You can move it around a little bit and it'll get tighter. So if you're in there and you want a little more support maybe to kind of squat yeah. and kind of like, like you're in a swing almost. Exactly, like a, like a butt hammock. Yeah, you can sit and. Yeah. You and know, that's the one thing people ask me a lot, like, is it comfortable? And my first go-to answer is, well, simp just like a tree stand, you're on this butt cheek, you're on that butt cheek. When I've been in the saddle for full day sits, it's kind of like, you know, you might be standing on one leg a little more and then the other, yeah. then lower it a little bit so you can squat. I know some people even use knee pads. Oh yeah. Which some of the first light stuff I got this year has knee pads oh, I'm, yeah, I'm planning boundary. on using. So it's kind of like, yeah, you might just kind of shift around, but as far as comfortable, yeah, it's very comfortable. All right, Rob's gonna run us through some basic 101s from <laughs> setting up. A couple components of the tree saddle is your, your is this considered the saddle or harness or? Yeah, harness, yoke system. We yoke call system. It. You've got your climbing sticks and then you're gonna have your platform. Like what other pieces really do you have? There's accessories on accessories okay. on accessories. You can but go the forever. main pieces that you need to actually be able to do this is a saddle, a platform and climbing sticks and we'll run through all those. But right now what we're gonna do is just kind of get low to the ground, show you guys how to set up just the platform and uh, a couple of the accessories that, especially if you're hunting public land, you'd be wanting to use. This is our predator platform. This is what you stand on in the tree. Goes on pretty simply. Just wrap around the tree. 
And we came up here and you know, you can hear the trucks and we found a spot that would represent somewhere I would go elk hunting. Dark timber, um, this is about the tree I like to look for and I like to find a tree that's somewhat straight. The good thing about the saddles, you can get away with trees that are not perfectly straight but I found they're a little more comfortable if they are straight or maybe even leaning away from you on your shooting side. This is your lifeline when you're up in the tree. This is your tether and what connects to your Amsteel bridge. So the way that works. Imagine you have already climbed up and got to where you're gonna put your platform. This is exactly what it, where you're gonna go from there. There's some tips and tricks to the climbing sticks that we'll show you as well, but just for starters, I'm going to show you the basics. Setting up that platform is super easy. I don't know if you saw it, but wrap it around, connect it, connect uh, the D loop to this. What do you call this little notch? I don't know the terminology. <laughs> it's got a notch. Yeah, the notch. We'll you put it, it around notch. and you tighten that stand um, yeah, you with just, it up, right? Yep, so you it tighten up. it with it up and then as you fold it, that's when it really... And then what you want to do is you want to really set that in and cam it down. One of the things I noticed in one of your videos where you and BMAC were shooting out of it is when you stepped on it, it pulled away from the tree and you guys just kind of left it like that. Sometimes I'll notice the top will yeah. if it's not extremely tight. So what we have for that, it's called a tow hook. Some people would say, oh, all you got to do is set your, your platform properly. And you're like, yeah, that might be the case. But sometimes it's going to pull away a little bit. And what you do, I'm tethered in, I'm at height. I keep, get all the, all the slack out of my tether, put my foot up top and I just pick oh. it up and cam it down. Okay. And that makes it rock solid. That's in a nutshell, the basic setup. So this is what you would hang your bow from. This is public land friendly. When you say that is because some states have rules where you can't drill into trees. Yeah, most right? most states on public land you can't like you can't go through the bark. Like you can't put in climbing pegs. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really important, obviously, to follow those rules. Yeah. Last thing you want to do is get some ticket. So I'm gonna have you jump up here and get in the saddle. I'll grab your bow so you can kind of show some of the movements that you've done in the past. But this is built in such a way that you can just pull it up. Yep. So that's but it a, doesn't go down right. unless you release this Which, this latch. Don't pull it. When yeah. Don't pull that yeah. when you have weight on yourself. But you're really just trying to find that sweet spot, and it's going to take some practice. But you can lean into this, pull it up. If it's too high, you know, loose some slack, loosen that, and you can kind of go in the opposite way. But I mean, that's I'm somewhat a little far from the tree, but that's comfortable, and I definitely could shoot from here easy. This is kind of like maybe what a setup would look like. Yeah, exactly, like a mock setup. Just mm -hmm. picture being 15 to 20 feet up in a tree, which is another thing I want to point out. When I say 15 to 20 feet in a tree, that's something, you know, with a lock-on or a ladder stand, you typically do have to get higher because you can't really mess with branches. But one of the beauties of the saddle is you can climb trees that are a mess of branches. Mm -hmm. I was hunting out west with Ernie, actually in Utah last year. And the trees he had me climbing up, when we first got there, I was like, there's no way we're going to get up that. Like, it was, I didn't Just, even know that aspens grew like that. It was insane how many branches. But the hardest part, maybe you've got some tricks, is when there's branches, you're de I'm detaching my lineman's belt yeah. to, like, you know, a couple sketchy moments. So that's something you don't want to do, Eric. Yeah. That's sketch. But you got to <laughs> to get around the branch. You so know? I'm glad we met up because I'll show you today, like, how to actually do it. But what you would do as you're climbing and you have your lineman's rope. And we'll show this to you folks at home in a second. But you'd be going up with your lineman's belt and you'd take this out and so connect you it so you always have two have a lineman's belt. So then you would take off, oh. wrap your lineman's belt, and you'd still be connected at two points, disconnect yep. the bottom one, and then go back, keep working your way up the tree. That's another thing, a, a term that we're gonna be using is point of contact. That means how you're actually connected to a tree. So when he says two points of contact, you could have this set up in such a way or a lineman's belt and then a lineman's belt around which would hook would the, the lineman's belt do these guys yep. or yep those are the lineman belt okay right there. we'll get to that here in a little bit but yeah this is like a mock setup i'm a left left-handed shooter say i found a wallow or a really popular game trail i tend to make that the easy way to shoot like 
the most likely place I think I'm gonna shoot mm -hmm. is gonna be my first option. But if you watched my archery elk hunt, I was set up this way mm -hmm. for a wallow when the bull came on this side. Yep. And that was the first time I, I went ninja, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Which this is one, this is, but that's the cool part about the saddle. You don't just have one direction that's comfortable. You've, I've got so many different ways and you can probably teach me more than I already know, but you got so many different ways to shoot different angles. And that bull that I shot would have looked like this, like extreme yeah. six yard yep. shot, you know? Yeah. Oh, I watched the video. He looked like a contortionist in it. So Eric was just talking about like just getting comfortable in the saddle. And one of the things that he didn't have before was one of these back straps. And it, what it does is it supports your lower back, especially for those low, all day sits. So if you pull that forward with both hands, do you, is it nice and tight? So it kind of like- That takes all the stress off completely. all the hot spots. Exactly. On your legs and your butt. And so shooting, I mean, it's a little higher now. Are we talking about any interruption so there? Or? Typically you're not going to be shooting at that angle, right? You'd be, you're going to be like, your legs would be canted like that, but your back's going to be straight. Mm -hmm. So when you introduce that slack, it gets yeah. completely out of the way. And I did tight, when you said tighten it up, I did a lot, so maybe a little too much, but yeah, I could see if I didn't lean up to shoot, mm -hmm. that's like gone now. And I'll run that, I'll, alternate between like up underneath my armpits, the middle of my back, and then I'll even put it like just underneath the bottom of the saddle. And you talk about all day comfort. Like I had to stop running. It's it like you got a standing I'm hammock. <laughs> yeah. I'm, a, I'm in a whole you standing hammock right now. Yeah. Now I just need one of those. I'd put, pack a second one for my head and just be up there. <laughs> dude. Yeah. As far as the shots, like typically any elevated kind of hunting, you're going to be setting up so that where you hope that elk's traveling is going to be on your strong side. So you'd be at full draw, hoping that Eric's the elk, right? Unfortunately, elk don't always read the script and you can have them come up behind you. So for one of the beauties of the saddle is being able to get into the tree and take that, that pot shot off the backside. Even worse is sometimes they come in from a direction where you cannot get over and twist your body enough. Well, with a saddle, you have a little bit better of an opportunity. So as I spin underneath that tether, it's pinning me against the tree. And now mm -hmm. I have all my weak side has all of a sudden become my strong side. And then there's other ways. So like for me, that's a little bit more movement and you're not gonna be doing it that fast, moving that quick in the tree. Obviously, obviously you're way more methodical about your movement. We're just speeding this up for the video's sake, but Another way you can get around the tree and get off, say something's coming into my one o'clock, is burying that knee into the tree and working your way around. So that's literally 360 degrees around the tree. And that's really all about building the confidence, right? Yeah, just getting- And, and practicing. Getting, that's what they always say too. Like when I first got into saddle hunting, maybe three years ago when I moved back to New York, it was like, can I trust this? And then I read into the specs and it's like thousands of pounds that this will hold. Like you'll see these little Dyneema ropes that we use for our, for our climbing sticks. You wouldn't think that they would hold you, but they're like thousands of pounds rated. Mm -hmm. So once you start really buying into like, okay, I'm actually safe in this, then you just start experimenting and you can get pretty mm -hmm. crazy with it. This is a climbing stick. We make this, there's a bunch on the market. I obviously am a little partial to ours. Uh, this is an Aider. In no way does Tethered endorse the use of Aiders with our product. Let me make that clear. So if you're gonna use one, climb at your own risk. We don't sell those and we don't recommend them, but I like to use them. But you've got one. Oh, well, we got one for demo purposes. So this little cord is made out of Dyneema. It's what they make synthetic winches out of. Just a simple little cross hook here, mm -hmm. wrap around, and then we have a little rope keeper. Just to get that out of the way. Exactly. Tuck that back, and then you're just gonna set that stick. We talked about the linemans. Mm -hmm. Here we have the linemans. I just drape that over my neck until I get up on my first stick. That lineman's belt is already attached to the system and stuffed in like a stuff pouch. Exactly. So then I get this 
set. Now, what the Lyman's is really awesome for is allowing you to use two hands. Because Eric, you were saying that you did it and without Before a Lyman's. Before this system, like setting up a stand of any kind without a Lyman's belt, so dangerous. Yeah, because you're like hugging the tree and kind of like using <laughs> your chest to hold the stick in uh -huh. place, which is not the safest thing to do. So you've got this attached how? I got a little S beaner here that it's hooked onto. Okay. And I just keep those. So my platform I throw into an S carabiner as well on the back side here. Perfect. So it's carry you're carrying it up with you as you climb exactly. and as you set the sticks. Exactly. Then again. About 18 inches between those two sticks? Yeah, general rule of thumb is like as tall as your knee, that's usually like where people are comfortable in terms of li like lifting their leg up to. I get made fun of a lot by Jared Schaefer uh, because I have locked up hips and he'll space his super far uh -huh. apart and I'll like have to put my knee on it and pull myself up. So this is what we were showing you guys down low. It's exactly how to get this set up and I'm going to set this one up for you, Eric. Now the important thing here guys, is don't just make that leap of faith. Onto that platform until you're connected with two points of contact. Because God forbid something catastrophic happens and that platform kicks out, you wanna have this lifeline. So what I do, get to the top of my last stick and get this set up and connected before I take that step. That's a good tip because I would probably step on with just the lineman's belt and ship, shimmy over and then set that up. Well, 90% of all hunting accidents happen from an elevated position when you're transitioning from the ladder to your perch. Mm -hmm. So. That's With that smart. statistic, I'd rather just not be a statistic. Just not be par be part of the good, the good <laughs> end of the statistic. So as you can see, I've really wrenched that up, gotten all the slack out of it. And then I make that transition onto my platform. Yeah, that's good. Once I know that's set and I'm good to go there, I disconnect my lineman's belt, get all my stuff put into my pockets. Here's the tow hook at elevation. I'm able to put all that side pressure and I'm not worried about it kicking out. Mm -hmm. So then I can make those difficult shots like getting around the tree onto this side, swinging out this way. I mean, that's yep. 360 degrees, you're covered. All right guys, here's a first attempt at me getting up here. Everything's pretty much set for me, but Say I got down and went back to camp and now I'm coming back to my setup. I'm gonna start with the uh, lineman's belt. These, these are threaded and trust me, I use them. I like to cinch that up so it can't come undone. I would, it's been a minute, so I'm gonna try to find like a sweet spot to where I could still climb and I'm not too close to the tree. Right there feels pretty good. That's, I mean, now I can tell that like my lineman's belt is pretty far away. Not that it's not possible, but I would cinch that up. I like to be a little tighter. That feels a little more comfortable there. You can really climb with the lineman's belt. A lot of people, heck, like the lumberjacks, like climb like that, huh? Oh, we yeah. obviously got the handles and the pegs on the climbing sticks for that. But if needed, you can. And that's kind of how I shift up to the next spot before I use my hands. 
when you're here, like this is just, I'm usually fishing this around. Do you have like a tip for? So you can either fold that? it up and then reset it, it work mm -hmm. your way around it. Or you can fish it around the whole thing. Yeah, I mean. But typically I'm mobile, right? So I'm not hunting the same spot the next day, which is a little bit different from like you're setting a stand. Yeah. And you're going back to it. Whoa. Gotta watch out for all the sticks got jabbed in the forehead. So like Rob was saying, that transition is where a lot of accidents happen. And I'm really glad I learned that. Not that I lear learned the statistic, but I learned the fact that getting set up with this before the transition is important. And I really like that. Which as you get higher and higher, you can take that and just cinch it up until you're it's crazy because i haven't done this for a while and it is kind of like whoa you know oh yeah your guts your heart so now that i'm here i really want to make sure i've got this in a place that's comfortable once you're here you can detach your lineman's belt man i've just got so much to learn i mean i'm feeling really good and everything feels fine it's just a refresher that feature right there if you can see i'm grabbing these hooks and kind of getting that underneath my butt cheeks really does make it comfortable this is a new product that my other setup doesn't have what do you call this rob uh that's a doyle's gear hoist so rob set it up on my bow before i started climbing and you guys probably saw it as i would take a step it would just release so that's a nice feature that's just built into this pack huh for this pouch no no that's uh something you hey, accessory that, that's an accessory <laughs> you can get that online doyle's gear hoist quick plug they have some other accessories like the um what do you call the freaking the grapple hook grapple the hook. scorpion grapple hook they got that they got all the other accessories we're not set up but i do want to shoot a couple it's been a minute so i'm gonna let a couple rip right here 20 yards that's probably what i would want to set up if i was uh, setting up on elk is like a nice 20 to 30 yard shot on a water hole, a wallow, or a main trail. But again, this is my strong side. I put the target where it would really be the most simple way to do it. So if that was an elk, I like to draw kind of level and then use the hips and everything else to kind of settle. Again, I'm glad I'm doing this now, and this is really gonna motivate me to get out in the, just maybe up here in the canyon and do this more before this season. Because the last thing I wanna do is get up there and have a bull come in, and I'm not confident, and I'm not used to the movements um, of shooting from a saddle. I am shooting a 30 pin at this distance, so I'm trying to aim just a little low. Nice. That feels good. It, it's kind of crazy being back up here because it's been a long time since I sat in one, almost a full calendar year. Tree saddle hunting. Like how many times have you gone to a water hole or as you're hiking through elk country or even mule deer country, how many times have you found like a water hole or a wallow? You first, you look up and say, man, I wish I had a tree stand here. With this mobile setup, that is the answer to it. And that's why I've been choosing to hunt out of a tree saddle. I just love it. It's lightweight. I can hike it into the back country. And just like Rob said, it's not everything, but you're adding another tool to the tool belt. Um, one of my goals this year is to shoot an elk out of this thing. So, let's go. Let's go. Well guys, I hope that was helpful and I hope it inspires you guys to get out and hunt out of a tree saddle and at least add that saddle to your tool belt. And as promised, Tethered is giving away an entire setup. Everything you guys need to get set up this fall, just in time for the fall hunts. So you're gonna get a saddle, you're gonna get a platform, you're gonna get climbing sticks. All you have to do is these two things. One, subscribe to the Hushin channel right here on YouTube. And number two is in the comment section, just type, I want one. 
those two things and you're automatically entered, I'll go ahead and pick one in the comment thread and reply to the comment of who wins the setup. Also, thanks to the team and Rob at Tethered. Go check out their uh, YouTube channel if you want more information on the setup and if you just want some entertaining content and tree saddle hunts on film, go to their YouTube channel. Link in the description. See you guys on the next video.